Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all of our students. So today, uh, we will be having a briefing for the, our next practical session. This practical session is actually a basic uh, demonstration on how you can differentiate uh, between malignant and uh, benign neoplasia. So what we are going to do uh, during the practical, we will have four gross specimen and we we'll have four uh, HPE uh, slides. Lah. For gross specimen, uh, we have this uh, uh, specimen that uh, demonstrate uh, ulcer, ulcerative lesion which uh, we will explain how you can differentiate benign and malignant ulcer and of course we have a soft tissue tumor uh, which one of it is benign and one of it is malignant uh, soft tissue and bone tumor and we have this uh, HPE slides which demonstrate how you can differentiate between a polyp which is benign and also or, uh, the one with carcinoma and of course we have also how to differentiate skin lesion between the benign and malignant so these are the basic features uh, between the benign and malignant um, uh, tumor or neoplasia which also applicable to other sites of tumor to certain degrees okay so for gross pathology for first case we have 24 year old gentleman presented with abdominal pain and melina so as you can see, uh, these are the gross uh, specimen. Usually, after a, uh, after an ulcer, usually the uh, perforated ulcer, you will uh, the surgeon will do uh, excision and send the tissue sample to our lab. So usually our examination start by gross examination. So this uh, is how uh, this ulcer looks like for this patient. So uh, this ulcer uh, is uh, the size is quite small here. You can see about three point five centimeter. The color is tan. The shape is punch out ulcer. Uh, what do we mean by punch out? Is like uh, you punch uh, some soft uh, structure uh, where uh, it's uh, going uh, the 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 whatever material that you punch is going inside so that's that's what you call it's a punch out also means it's going out lah. so the border usually you can see uh, it's well defined and fairly well circumscribed the edges you can see the edges between here and the ulcer is uh, flat uh, it's not inverted it's flat almost the same level as the uh, the edge of the ulcer is almost the same level as the surrounding tissue and the base usually uh, superficial is not too deep and usually it has this clean granulation tissue this is the uh, characteristic of benign ulcer so in this case because this ulcer is occur in the stomach so it's a feature suggestive of benign ulcer most likely secondary to peptic ulcer disease so our next case, we have a 62-year-old gentleman presented with early satiety, weight loss, and recurrent vomiting. So uh, when we examine the ulcer, actually the ulcer usually a bit uh, larger. Usually in this picture, you have at least 6 cm. And the color usually is tan hemorrhagic. Uh, usually sometimes you have this uh, whitish area of necrosis. The shape, you can see the ulcer is very irregular shape. Uh, like you can see in previous uh, benign ulcer, you can see well circumscribed. This one is uh, very irregular, the shape. Uh, the border is uh, ill-defined. You are not sure whether these are the border or these are the ulcer border. And usually the edges here, you can see it's higher than the surrounding tissue. So this is what we call heap up uh, edges and usually the border uh, usually have this nodular structure uh, and the base usually it's deep and sometimes containing necrotic areas like this whitish area is necrotic area and also hemorrhagic area so these features actually suggestive of malignant ulcer most likely secondary to gastric adenocarcinoma uh, for our 
practical session, we don't have a malignant uh, gastric ulcer. So we replace the ulcer with the uh, ulcerative tumor from the larynx. But how you interpret is similar. Uh, you interpret same uh, size, color, shape, border, edges and base. It's the same how you interpret. Usually malignant ulcer, the characteristic almost always similar, uh, which have this again, uh, the color usually tan hemorrhagic, size larger, shape irregular, border ill-defined, uh, sometimes nodular. Edges will have this heap up edges and base usually deep uh, with uh, sometimes you have this not very clean, uh, usually have hemorrhagic and necrotic tissue. So we move on to the next case. Uh, we have a 32-year-old lady presented with heavy menstrual bleeding. So uh, you, when uh, the clinician send the uterus, this is the uterus. Uh, so uh, the uterus, you have this uh, multiple masses. The largest is this area, uh, which uh, the size is a bit sm uh, considerably small. It's 4 cm in size. The color is uh, grayish whitish. This color of hemorrhage usually is because of the contamination during the operation. Usually when you wash this, uh, this uh, blood here will uh, be clean up if you're washing. But if let's say it's, uh, the, there is hemorrhagic uh, within the tumor, when you wash this area, usually it's not, uh, it's not, uh, uh, the, the blood is not, uh, clean up lah after you wash it's uh, still inside the tumor so the location of course uh, for this uh, this tumor or this neoplasia usually they have three location uh, for this you have uh, submucosa submucosa means the this lesion <coughs> is uh, protruding or involving the endometrial cavity these are the and this is the endometrial cavity if it is located within the uh, uterine wall we call it intramural uh, lesion lah. Uh, so this is the intramural lesion so of course the shape you can see it is uh, round or well circumscribed uh, the border is well defined smooth surrounding tissue fairly normal so there is no necrosis of the surrounding tissue, no extension of tumor to surrounding tissue. So this is the characteristic of benign lesion. So in this case, this feature is uh, suggestive of benign mass, most likely uterine leomyoma or also known as fibroid. If uh, you are going to clinical years or postgraduate, usually we expect you to uh, answer like multiple uh, leiomyoma or uh, also known as leiomyomata uh, which involve uh, intramural and submucosa uh, submucosal region so this is the complete answer but for your level we can accept uh, just uh, benign mass most likely you try leiomyoma okay for the fourth case you have a 22 year old man presented with mass over the right knee this is actually a not soft tissue mass uh, because it's involving, uh, it's arising from the bone. Uh, just we are using this as an example of malignant tumor. So as you can see here, the size is very large. Uh, there is a irregular lesion from here, uh, which is the uh, epiphysis, extend to diaphysis here. And uh, it's very large. The color is tan hemorrhagic. The location is not very well defined, but the epicenter, which is the most area of the tumor, is located here, which is at the uh, metaphysis region, which extends to both epiphysis as well as diaphysis region. So uh, for bone, uh, here, the, the, the one who, uh, which is uh, facing the articular surface is epiphysis, the one uh, which are facing the uh, the other side is actually diaphysis. In between here, we call it metaphysis. So these are the anatomical location of the bone. And the location here, epicenter, is metaphysis. So the shape 
uh, it's very ill defined you are not sure what is what are, what is the shape for this tumor and the border also very infiltrative you can see here here infiltrate here the tumor here infiltrate here and here you can see it's infiltrate towards surrounding soft tissue so the border is very ill defined and infiltrative and usually the surrounding uh, there is an extension of tumor into the soft tissue and there is a large area of necrosis this whitish area here is the areas of necrosis so these are the characteristic of malignant tumor for this case is malignant mass uh, most likely uh, osteosarcoma of distal femur so these uh, are the characteristic of uh, benign and malignant uh, mass lah. so the initial one we discuss benign and uh, malignant ulcer and the second one uh, we discuss on how you differentiate benign and malignant mass so we move on to the microscopic uh, which is the histopathological examination so the first first case you have a 50 year old gentleman uh, noted a fecal occult blood test positive during screening for colorectal cancer screening you uh, usually in malaysia you have two uh, met, uh, method of screening one we are using uh, fecal occult blood test where we take the uh, occult blood in the stool uh, for the uh, <coughs> uh, for the screening uh, which uh, we send to the lab and the second usually we do a colonoscopy and if let's say there is any lesion we biopsy the lesion so uh, in most uh, areas in malaysia especially in sabah we use this uh, method of screening uh, uh, for colorectal CA, fecal occult blood test. So when they, uh, this, there is a positive, we need to do colonoscopy uh, and biopsy the lesion. So when we biopsy the lesion, this is the lesion for this patient. You can see it is a polypoidal uh, colonic mucosal tissue. It looks like a mushroom. Here you have this stalk. This is the, uh, the area, uh, the head, the poly so it's a polypoidal colonic mucosal tissue some of the gland display low grade dysplastic changes here is the normal colonic mucosal gland you have uh, the nucleus is epically located and there is a lot of goblet cell in between but uh, the dysplastic gland here you can see it's pseudo stratified the nucleus is pseudo stratified means it is uh, more than one cell layer and usually it's elongated and hyperchromatic uh, hyperchromatic means it's very dark and usually you have this in uh, the nucleus usually don't have nucleoli and usually uh, it has a mucin loss these are the mucin in the normal gland in the dysplastic gland you can see there's a mucin loss here you don't have uh, made a lot of mucin uh, anymore some of the dysplastic gland have retain some of the mucin and many of the dysplastic gland has lost the mucin and you can see there's a lack of abs or absence of mitosis for this lesion you you see the stop here uh, there is a there is no dysplastic changes so uh, meaning to say uh, the dysplasia the dysplastic gland uh, totally removed from the patient body because the stop is normal uh, so this feature is actually cons uh, colonic polyp consistent with tubular adenoma, uh, low-grade dysplasia. Or you can also uh, diagnose this case as adenomyomatous polyp with low-grade dysplasia. Uh, both also uh, share similar, uh, simil uh, both terms also can be used in the clinical practice. Okay, for the next case, you have a 60-year-old gentleman presented with altered bowel habit and PR bleeding. So in this case, uh, there is a mass, uh, usually very irregular, and the stalk is no longer visible. So usually you have this infiltrative mass, usually you uh, infiltrate until deep uh, submucosal level. So when we take a section uh, at the, the lesion, you, you can see the malignant gland here, which is a cribriform uh, architecture. Cribriform means the gland fused together. Uh, where you don't see a normal glandular structure like this like this you can see normal glandular structure with lumen inside but in here you can see it's fused together and the lumen is very irregular so these are the cribriform 
architecture of the uh, gland which is suggestive of malignant changes and as you can see the cytologic feature you have this pleomorphic uh, vesicular nuclei vesicular means it's very pale with coarse chromatin like this so you have this uh, vesicular nuclei prominent nucleoli prominent nucleoli means you have this uh, dot uh, of another it's like another nucleus uh, inside the nucleus so it's uh, what we term as nucleoli and you have this abundant moderate to abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm these are the characteristic of uh, malignant uh, characteristic for this uh, this tumor and you can see there's a lot of mitosis here these are one of the example of mitosis this are another example of mitosis this is another example of mitosis so there's a uh, a lot of mitosis which also we can uh, use the term is brisk mitosis and the stroma you can see the stroma means the area in between the tumor and the connective tissue you can see there is a uh, desmoplastic changes this pinkish uh, color there's a changes here as well as there is a presence of mucin in the stroma these are the mucin these uh, spaces in the arrowhead here and also here you can see there's a mucin so these are the malignant counterpart of the polyp just now the polyp is the precursor lesion uh, the tubular adenoma here is a precursor lesion and these are the malignant counterpart uh, of the lesion so these are malignant tumor consistent with colorectal adenocarcinoma so meaning is a, a gland forming tumor okay so the third case you have a 20 year old lady uh, requested to remove skin lesion for cosmetic purpose which is not uncommon these days okay so as you can see uh, from this low magnification you can see this uh, lesion or skin lesion is actually uh, consists of well-defined uh, nested proliferation of uh, melanocytes symmetry here and here is about symmetry uh, the amount of the uh, the proliferation but the, there is a asymmetry of the top to bottom this asymmetry is because of the maturation descent maturation descent is the character of benign lesion so later i will explain so you can see first of all uh, there is a nested pattern from the dermoepidermal junction here uh, up to uh, dermis uh, so uh, if you go into higher magnification uh, the melanocytes is actually quite uniform small uh, bland to hyperchromatic uh, nuclei bland means it's not too dark not too pale nucleus and uh, some of it is hyperchromatic some uh, of the nuclei a bit dark and of course uh, there is no nucleoli uh, visible here uh, unlike the adenocarcinoma just now you have a uh, nucleoli and uh, here you can see moderate eosinophilic cytoplasm there's a lack or absence of mitosis you cannot see mitosis in this area and uh, what is the characteristic of benign for this lesion is actually one is uh, symmetry cytologic features uniform cytologic features and bland all these uh, cytologic features and maturation descent where you can see the melanocyte usually larger uh, uh, at the upper part uh, usually it's uh, epithelioid more epithelioid looking at the higher part which is uh, epithelioid type a melanocytes and usually uh, as it descend downwards uh, it uh, become a lymphocyte like uh, melanocyte uh, it's like a small lymphocyte here but it's actually it's a melanocyte uh, which is lymphocyte like uh, melanocyte which we call it type b and when it go downwards it's new become neurotized uh, morphology neurotized means it's becoming uh, almost wavy like uh, nerve bundle like this area this is neurotype type c morphology of this melanocyte and of course uh, as it got, goes down it becomes smaller and becomes uh, neurotized and there is no uh, mitosis or pigmented cell at the deeper part of the lesion these are the uh, characteristic of benign lesion which is the maturation descent 
And for this case, uh, usually it is uh, how we diagnose, how we interpret is benign melanocytic proliferation consistent with a common acquired nevus. Or if you uh, going uh, further for postgraduate level, we expect uh, compound nevus. But for your undergraduate level, we, uh, if you answer only nevus, also acceptable. Common acquired nevus, also acceptable. Okay, so... We move on to the fourth case, a uh, 73-year-old man presented with rapidly growing nodule on his left, uh, lower left lateral thigh. So as uh, opposed to the previous case, you can see atypical proliferation of melanocyte here. And you can see uh, there is asymmetry from here to here. Uh, here you can see is a bit more, here a bit less. And of course, uh, you have this irregular solid sheet pattern. It's like all the tumor clumping together, forming is like a sheets of paper. At starting from the dermal epidermal junction, uh, going to the deep down here in the deep dermis. So it's uh, the characteristic for architecture characteristic. It's very malignant characteristic, which is uh, irregular solid sheets and also asymmetric uh, lesion. So uh, if we go in the higher magnification, you can see this, the cells are pleomorphic, means it's a variable uh, size and shape, uh, and the nucleus is hyperchromatic, very dark, and you can see here prominent nucleoli, this nucleoli in the center, uh, you can see moderate eosinophilic cytoplasm. And there is a bris mitosis uh, in the deeper area, the, for example, here is the mitosis, one, here you can see another mitosis here too. Here also you can see uh, further, <coughs> this uh, also arguably this uh, also the mitosis here. Uh, and also this one, this uh, the presence of a bris mitosis, a lot of mitosis, especially at the deeper part. These are the one that uh, we are suspicious of malignant lesion. And if you compare, there is an absence of maturation descent. As I mentioned earlier in previous case, usually for common nevus or compound nevus, usually the top uh, cells are quite larger as it goes, as it descends downwards uh, towards the uh, dermis, the cells become smaller and neurotized. But this, the top uh, of the lesion is almost similar size uh, with the, down, uh, the bottom of the lesion. So there is a pleomorphic melanocytic proliferation present even at the deep dermis. And at the deep dermis, you can see pigmented cell and mitosis. These are the characteristic of malignant uh, lesion. For this is atypical melanocytic uh, proliferation consistent with malignant melanoma. So uh, that's all from me. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have any question, you can ask uh, during practical session as well as uh, you can also ask alternatively in Smart V3 forum if you have uh, any question. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.